It's not uncommon for systems programmers to need access to their data at the bit level, and bitwise operators give you the ability to do that. Bitwise operators are common to not only the C programming language, but to many other languages as well. And you might be thinking, well, Java is not necessarily a systems language or Python's not. Why would these languages need bitwise operators? Well, when you're working with data formats that are commonly used on the internet or that you're commonly used in programs uh, saved by programs, these formats are often encoded in various ways that make use of bits and try and get maximal use out of every bit in their uh, file encoding. And so they do very clever things to pack a lot of information. Like sometimes when you have a lot of settings that are either true or false, you can pack into a single byte eight different true false settings uh, in a way that if you treated them as eight different values might take up much more space. Right? And so people have gone to great lengths to form uh, file format encodings that are very uh, tidy. And in order to unpack those encodings, the people who write the libraries to process those files need access to bits directly. And in systems programs, there are often times when you're working with things at the operating system level where you need to be uh, concerned with bit level operations too. There are three classes of bitwise operators we're gonna look at. So the first and the easiest is the unary complement operator that is effectively gonna flip every bit in some bit field and that's all it does. It's, you can think of it as a, a, as a complement to the not operator in logical and Boolean logical algebra, right? Where uh, same idea, but this is gonna work bit by bit and, and at each bit in your field, it will be flipped after using it. The next are binary operators. And by binary, we're not talking about binary data, we're talking about binary expressions, meaning we've got two um, uh, sides to the expression, a right-hand side and a left-hand side, and then the operator goes between them because we're using infix operators. And these binary operators are just like their logical counterparts, but again, they're working individually through each bit, hence the name bitwise. We're, we're working bitwise through all of the data in some field and we'll apply very similar uh, heuristics for and and or, and then exclusive or we'll see uh, it adds a little bit more nuance to the idea of oring, but is commonly useful in um, things like encoding, encrypting, uh, and parity checking, and some other uh, common systems concerns. The last two are shift operators that allow you to shift all of your bits in one direction or the other, and we'll see ways that we can do that using the shift left and shift right operators. They're different from the um, previous set, because uh, they're taking the bit field they're working on and then the number of uh, places that want that you want to shift in one direction to the other as the second operand. Uh, we'll look at that detail as we get into it. So the bitwise complement operator is very straightforward. It's just flip every bit. Where there's a zero in your input bit, make it a one. Where there's a one, make it a zero. Right? And this is the tilde operator, okay? So uh, here we have tilde zero, one, zero, one. We're gonna get one, zero, one, zero. So if we had a character in our C program, like A, and we assigned it something like um, the bit pattern 1100, uh, and notice that's only a nibble, so uh, there are four bits that we're not specifying here. And we uh, said character B is the complement of A, so tilde A, let me make that tilde a little bit less squiggly, uh, all right? Uh, then after this operation completes, if we were to look at the bit field for B and focus on its low order bits, we would see that it's 0011, right? Because we flipped all those bits and that's what the uh, bitwise complement operator is. Notice that you're putting this operator just before the value that you are using it on. So this is very much like negative, the negative operator with a number like negative one, or the not operator with some, you know, uh, true or false value, right? Great. So that's the unary operator. And then let's take a look at our binary operator. So the bitwise and is a binary operator that takes two bit fields, right? So two bit vectors, A and B, and it's gonna result in a third bit vector. We're not changing anything about our input bit vectors. And what we're doing is we're gonna go through bit by bit, bitwise, and compare each bit at the same place in these fields. And if both bits are one, the resulting bit will have a one in that same place. Uh, if either or are zero or both are zero, then it will be zero. And so hopefully you can translate what you know about the and logical operator with true false Boolean values uh, to the bitwise and, but notice that 
this is going to take place uh, if we had a bytes worth of, of bits. There would be eight different comparisons that wind up going into producing the, uh, the resulting uh, uh, bit field, right? So what you're gonna see in these tables is we take these uh, bit vectors, right? So 1100 zero, zero for A, and we're representing them down this table, right? And 1010 zero, zero for B, we're representing that down the table. So we're keeping track of this is our high order bit, this is our low order bit. And so what bitwise and is doing is it's going and it's saying, okay, are both of these one? Yep, then A and B is going to be one. Are both of these one? Nope, then A and B is going to be zero. We're doing this for every bit in our field. So if you had a 64-bit integer, and two 64-bit integer um, variables, you could and them and there would be 64 different bits that come out of it with this logic applied to it, right? In the same order. The or operator is gonna feel familiar as well. It's the same idea where at least one of the two bits in the same place when we compare two vectors as we move through each of the bits in the field, uh, is if, it's, if either bit is one, then the resulting bit will be one. Uh, and if both bits are one, that's totally fine too, right? So when the high order bit are both ones, right? These two bits in A and B, then the resulting A uh, bitwise or B will be one. Similarly with only one side or the other. And so the only way that you get a zero value on the result of a bitwise or is if both of your input bit fields had a zero at the same place, right? And so ultimately uh, we are producing this third uh, bit field here. And so we could store that result in a new variable uh, and, and do other computations or bitwise operations with it. The exclusive OR is really interesting and it has some fascinating, surprising uses in systems programming. Uh, and it gets it comes up quite a lot in encryption techniques as well. The idea is unlike OR, where if you have two true values or two ones in the same bit position, then uh, exclusive OR, that's gonna be zero, right? Exclusive OR says only one of the two has a value of one at this position in the bit field. Right? So only one or the other, it's a truly exclusive or. And you could, if you wanted to do this in a logical, with your logical operators, you could form a more complex Boolean expression with uh, and and or to get the same benefit. But with bitwise operations, it's built into most languages uh, and available to you. Uh, and so you can see this example here. So right, one exclusive or one is zero, one exclusive or zero is one, zero exclusive or one is one and zero exclusive or zero is zero. All right. Hopefully that lines up and I think playing around with these can help and getting some practice with these will help you uh, uh, drive the idea home. So the shift left operation is an interesting one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our bits and move them to the left. All right. And so what we can do is and with this operator is we specify our bit pattern that's going to be shifted as well as how many places we want it to be shifted by to the left, right? And that's gonna be a magnitude M. So um, if we wanted to be formal about this, uh, we could specify it using some of our vector notation. Uh, and notice that some bits are gonna get truncated, right? When we uh, shift too far off the left, and we can actually take a look at this here. So if we had a bit field like character A, and it stored uh, the binary pattern OB0101, right? Let me, let me try rewriting that. 0B0101, right? And we had a character C, or a character B, that is assigned the result of A shifted left by one position. Then what happens is we take each of these characters and we move them, or each of these bits, we move them one over, right? And so ultimately, uh, if we're thinking about only a nibble here, and we're gonna ignore the fact that a character for now has four more uh, bits in it. So we wouldn't necessarily truncate if we were thinking about a character with only four bits. Um, but let's imagine that we're working only with the nibbles shown in uh, the data table below. What's gonna happen is, uh, that zero gets truncated if we move things to the left, right? So now the high order bit is one and then zero, one, and then whatever, um, if, if however many places we shifted uh, to the left, we're gonna backfill zeros at those low order bits uh, in the pattern, right? So there's gonna be a zero there. But notice if we shift left two, 
with that same input pattern. Then notice there's two zeros here, and we've truncated this one, right? This, this leading one here moved forward one, two spaces, and now it's out of our, uh, of our nibble. Now again, if we were working with a byte, it would still be there until we shifted it all the way off the end of a byte. Uh, but if we're thinking just in terms of four bits here, which I think is easier to uh, illustrate, um, you get the point. We're, we're shifting off one end. Similarly, with if we shift left by three, notice there's three leading zeros, and then this one that was previously in the low order bit is now all the way up in the high order bit because we shifted it one, two, three. And lastly, if we shifted four, we only had a nibble, we would have lost all of the data. We would have had only zeros here, all right? So we can shift to the left. And the key thing to remember is when you're back filling places, you're filling in zeros, right? You're zero filling any of the uh, new positions that opened up after you shifted. And you can shift off the end of our, uh, of our fields. And typically in, in C, you're never gonna be working with a nibble only, right? Byte is gonna be the smallest data type you can work with. Uh, so it would take shifting off of the, uh, the, the eighth bit or the high order bit of a byte to see the same phenomenon at play uh, in a C character data, all right? So the bitwise right shift is interesting, all right? Let me just uh, fill in this table and then we'll explain what's going on. So when we're shifting from the right, we've got this interesting challenge. Well, we could just zero fill the new positions that open up on the left-hand side or in our high order bits, right? And that's what's happening here. Notice if our pattern is 0, 1, 0, 1, we shift right by one and we move, uh, this one gets truncated, right? This one goes to the second position and winds up here and then we're zero filling, right? So this is what happens when our highest order bit and whatever bit field we're working with is a zero, right? There's a slightly different thing that happens called uh, one extension or sign extension uh, that is going to happen when we have a one in our high order bit. And it has to do with the implications of, of using two's complement and having negative numbers, right? And it also has to do with some really clever tricks that relate to what we're doing in terms of shifting and what this would mean if we were trying to multiply and divide uh, uh, values, but I'll come back to that, right? But if you want to sort of uh, try and reason through some, what would be interesting, what are we actually doing? If we're shifting um, right by one, what is that operation if you were thinking of it in terms of multiply and divide? If we shifted left by one, what was that operation in terms of multiply and divide? If you want to pause this here for a minute to try and reason through that on your own, uh, I think it's an interesting little challenge. But let's look through what would happen if we were sign extending. And I want to again repeat that uh, in C, the smallest object we can work with is a byte. So uh, we would need the high order bit to be the, uh, the, the highest order eighth bit in a full bytes worth of bits in order to see this one extension uh, come into play. Um, but let's imagine that we are working with only a nibble and we care, we're calling this the highest order bit. Because the same idea will apply if we had two bytes, it would only apply to the highest order bit of the second byte, right, of the high order byte. And so if there's a one in the high order position and we shift uh, to the right, what's gonna happen is we're gonna backfill ones instead. Right? And this is gonna be called, this is what we call sign extension, right? So why are we doing this? Well, remember this one has a special meaning in two's complement, which tends to be how we represent all of our signed integer data in a systems language and most languages. And so the idea is we wanna preserve that sign uh, because we might actually be operating in a really interesting way on signed data. So what is the multiplication or division that's happening here? Well, when we're thinking about right shifting, uh, we're thinking of that uh, right shift by one position is the exact same as integer division by two, right? And if, if you stop and think about that for a minute, and what the implications of our placeholders are in two, their powers of two. Well, if we shift right, everything right by uh, one position, it's the same as dividing by two, right? So let's imagine um, we've got uh, the signed integer um, negative, and then uh, let's say we're trying to represent negative two, right? And so what would that bit pattern be? Well, uh, we're gonna have uh, one in the negative eight, right? 
and then we're gonna have four, two, and one. All right, so what do we add to negative eight to get to negative two? Well, if we add four to it, we would get from negative eight to negative four. If we add two to it, we would get from negative four to negative two. So we want a one, or sorry, we want a zero in our ones position, right? And so one, 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 zero is the same as a, is, is a nibble that represents negative two as a signed integer, right? So let's try right shifting everything by one and carrying out the sign extension and seeing what happens, right? So we right shift by one. So I might just uh, give that notation here in one position. And what that means is if we use this one uh, sign extension, we're gonna have a leading one and then we're gonna have three ones, right? Because we're moving this one to the one spot. So one, this one to the two spot. So one there, this one to the four spot, right? And then this leading one was the one that I, I, I plugged in due to sign extension. So now our bit field is one, 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 one. Well, what is that? Well, again, if we went and calculated the sign here, there's a special trick in, in this common pattern you'll see that you should know after having worked with this a little bit, which is if you see a signed bit field that's all ones, you know that that's a, that means negative one, right? So this is gonna be uh, negative eight plus four plus two plus one, that's negative one. What's the relationship between negative two and negative one? Well, negative two is, uh, if you divide negative two by two, it's the same as that results in a, a negative one value. And so if we use the sign extension rule and we treat a, a, a right shift by one as division, it turns out that's a much more efficient way to divide by two than doing uh, a full on division algorithm. Just saying, oh, this is a, a special case of division. We're just gonna shift everything to the right by one and not worry about the remainder or uh, the, the modulo of this, right? And this works whether we're working with uh, negative numbers if we use sign extension in this way or positive numbers by backfilling in that zero, right? So this is a pretty cool trick. Similarly, on the converse of this, uh, if we left shift one position, that's the same as multiplying by two. If we left shift two positions, both by four, three, uh, by eight, and so by powers of two. And so there's some clever optimizations that compilers wind up doing uh, to take advantage of, of this. But that's sort of the motivation um, the, the reason why you get this sign extension in right shifting uh, is because there are these scenarios where preserving that one and, and treating it as if like, okay, we're actually dividing by two and, and this might be a negative number. Um, and otherwise it would have been noise anyway, right? You shouldn't really like the fact that you're, whatever you backfill in isn't typically use, useful uh, because it's just, it's coming from nowhere. It's some just default convention. Uh, and, and, in, and in that case, why don't we use it so that we actually get this second interesting feature out of it? Uh, and that's another example of some like really like it's a, it's a clever trick to sign extend on a right shift like this. All right. So these are our uh, bitwise operators. There are some variations of this that are much like your arithmetic assignment operators where you can uh, just like you can say I is assigned I plus one or I plus equal one, or I uh, gets reassigned to itself plus one. Well, those same types of reassignment operators work with bitwise operators too. The single ampersand equal is a bitwise and, and so uh, this is actually a really convenient notation that you'll find useful in many frequent, uh, you'll frequently find useful in many different places as you're working uh, bitwise. You'll see it all the time in uh, many real world programs as well. You'll get to try your hand with these operators uh, in the next lab. As reference, there's also going to be this table, which gives all of the bitwise operators around the edge, uh, as well as, uh, oops, there's the last table here, that's the one sign extended, and that, remember, it's the, the high order bit is what's going to influence this. Uh, and then as well as the ASCII table and the table for converting between hex, binary, and decimal. Uh, and so if you wanna print this off, I think this would be handy to have uh, at your table as we're working on the exercises and uh, the next lab. These are bitwise operators. They're uh, you really, it's worth thinking through all of this on pencil and paper. And when you're working with these, I think bef until you get fully comfortable writing out exactly what you think is happening and confirming your intuition is gonna be important because oftentimes it's hard to introspect this uh, in a very simple and straightforward way because ultimately you're working with integers or characters uh, and are gonna have to refer back to a table or some other means of, of dumping your binary data. 
Uh, and so just working through these, getting some intuition for them, getting a feel for it, and, and being able to fluently go back and forth between hex and uh, nibbles and, and decimal is a really valuable skill to have as a systems programmer.